welcome, my name is Aaron Craig with Beyond This Games, and in this tutorial I'm going to be looking at how to play sounds in Game Maker Studio. And this will work for both Game Maker Studio 1 and 2, so follow along in whatever software that you use. To get started though, I need to attribute the sound effects I'm going to be using in this tutorial to the people who made them. I got them over at freesound.org, which is a great place for sound effects and background music, things like that. You just need to give the authors credit when you use them. So I'm going to be using sound effects from Leo Salam, Tom Can, and UFX. Alright, so let's jump into the basics of audio functions. The most important thing to note is that they must be in a specific format. That is .ogg, mp3, and wave. If it's not in one of those, then you need to get it converted there because it won't even show up as an option for you to import into your game. Now you can see here that there are basic audio functions and advanced audio functions. We're going to be covering basic in this tutorial, so if you already know how to play audio and you're looking for a more advanced way of controlling that sound, jump into the tutorial that I have over here. But if not, go ahead and stick around because what we're going to be covering is this function and a couple of others audio play sound. This is the bread and butter of playing sounds because it plays audio in your game. And a sound is anything in a sound file. That can be sound effects, background music, dialogue, it doesn't matter. In Game Maker Studio you use this function and you tell it which sound to play, priority, and priority just means which sound should be stopped in favor of another. So the higher the priority on a scale of 1 to 100 or 0.01 to 1, it doesn't really matter. That sound effect, if it's higher, will take precedence over lower. And then loop just means should it play indefinitely or not, which you might want for background music or something like that. The important thing to also note is that it returns the index, and that index is the sound that it makes to play. With that index, you can pause it, you can resume it, you can change the how it sounds, so saving that index is fairly important. So let's go ahead and jump in and get to work then. What we're going to do is quickly make a sprite that is going to be just a blue box. Um, I don't need it to be anything fancy, so I'm just going to color that in. I'm going to name this SPR box. We're going to create an object, call it OB, OBJ box. We're going to assign it this sprite and we're going to place it in the room. Because what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to play sounds by just clicking on this box and playing different sounds and pausing and resuming them through different keys. When you actually want to play sounds in your game, you'll know the function and how they work, so all you have to do is put them in at the right place, such as the step event when someone presses fire, or when someone dies, you play the sound effect with it. That part is fairly simple once you understand the code of how to actually play the sounds. Now, all the sound effects I'm going to be using, I will list in the description down below so you can download them, along with this finished product so you can play with it and see exactly how it works so you can tinker around. So let's go into sounds here. We're going to create a new one. This one's going to be sound explosion. Click on these three little dots, and I have three sound effects here, and I'm going to bring up explosion first. Now you have a lot of attributes and target options down here. For the most part, I wouldn't touch any of these. I'm not a huge audio guy, so I don't know a lot about it. But what I know is that for the output, I would do stereo. And then if you want a specific sample rate, bit rate, such as that is, go ahead and change that. But I'm going to leave these all the same. What you need to know is that here you can preview the sound, which I'm going to do now. <laughs> And if it previews, then it's working right. Now, let me give you a little caveat here because I had trouble the first time I was trying to do this. If you don't hear anything and you know that your sound file works right, like you can play it externally, come up here to File, Preferences, General Settings, and make sure that your default audio device is actually set to what you're listening to. I would imagine that it should always be set, but I had a problem where mine wasn't and I could not figure it out for the life of me for the longest time. Side note done. Inside of here you can preview, you can loop it, you can rewind if it's long. You can also come over here to the sound group mixer if you want to do more advanced functionality. You can link up audio so you see sounds can play in sync with each other, but we're not going to worry about that right now because that is more advanced. I just wanted to show that to you so you can play around with it. We're going to create two more sounds. So create, we're going to say sound fireplace. 
And then we're going to choose the fireplace sound, shocker, right? We're going to create sound uh, guitar. Then we're going to choose this lovely guitar background music. So I can turn the volume down right here. Okay. So now we have those three sound effects that we need. Inside of the OBJ box, we're gonna create an event. This is gonna be a mouse left pressed because I wanna make this really simple. So when you press down on the left mouse button on the box, we're gonna do audio, play, sound. And the sound ID we're gonna do is sound, explosion. Priority is gonna be one and loop will be zero, which is also false. So when we left click on the sprite box in our room, it's not going to play the sound. But I also want to do right pressed. We're gonna do this again, audio play sound. We're gonna do sound fireplace. We're gonna do priority one. If things are of the same priority, then they will just play equally. And we're gonna do zero for loop on that as well. Now I'm gonna go ahead and press F5 and run this and try clicking on this box because that's really all there is to it when you're playing sound effects. And there's the fireplace in the background. Right now we don't have a way to pause it though, so let's go ahead and figure out how to do that. So we're gonna add another event, and this is gonna be a key pressed, and we're gonna do letters, and we're gonna say P for pause. That logically makes sense. So right now we have sound effects possibly playing when we press P. Now, if we want to actually be able to pause them, the function we can use is audio pause all. That doesn't take any arguments, it just will pause all audio. Now, that's kind of useful, but sometimes we don't want to pause all audio. Sometimes we just want to pause a specific audio. And when we want to do that, we need to know the ID of the audio playing, which means that we have to have it saved. So, if I come in here and I catch the index that this is returning, and I say this is fireplace, then I can come over here and instead of pausing all of it, I can say audio pause sound, and I just have to give it the sound ID, and I say fireplace, and then it will pause it. So if we come in and we run this game, we can right click on the box, and then I can press P and it will pause the sound effect. And the other cool thing is that inside of here you can actually put sound fireplace. It'll know the sound that you're playing and then this, this will actually pause it. Now you might be asking why do we need the index at all? And that's because if you are playing lots of sound effects that are the same, such as explosions in different areas, and you want to be able to individually tweak or pause or resume those, you need to have a system in place that you have captured all of the indexes, otherwise you won't be able to find specific audio that's playing in your game. You might need to have like a long array of everything that's playing, or a DS system in place that you are actually finding all of the audio that's playing, and then you can individually pause and resume it as you see fit. But that's the basics of audio right there. Uh, I know I didn't use the sound guitar, but I'll include that anyway because it's very lovely. And that's how you play audio. Uh, Game Maker Studio has much more advanced audio functions for emitters, listeners, uh, tweaking the actual audio, like the gain, the pitch, the sound effect, the fall off. There's a lot of stuff you can do, but for a lot of people, this is all you need. And I wanna emphasize that sound in games is super important. A lot of times as artists or programmers, we don't think about sound until last because we don't need it to make the game actually run and function properly. But sound is a huge part. If you don't do good sound in your game, your audience will be taken out of your game. It won't be very immersive. It might uh, throw off the whole atmosphere if you do something wonky. So I just want to encourage you to understand how to use sound, how to where to use it, and that it is actually super important for creating a finished, polished game. But this is the basics, guys. It's very simple, very easy, and I hope that was helpful because that's all I've got for you today. Thank you for joining me, and as always, have fun making great games, and I will talk to you later. Hey there. Uh, I've got a Patreon, if you didn't know. If you'd like to support me, that would be great. 
up on the screen are the people who are pledging enough to get their name in the credits. They are helping fund this YouTube channel, which is awesome. I just want to give a shout out to them and all that they do to help me do this. It's great. If you would like to join, uh, you can click on the link at the end of the video or in the description below. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.